The recent reports surrounding Israel's alleged strike on Iranian military targets have generated a whirlwind of speculation and analysis, yet there is still no clear confirmation of any significant damage. Over 24 hours after the event, it seems that many Iranians have concluded the strike was largely ineffective. This belief has even sparked rumors of potential retaliation from Iran, leading many to view the attack as underwhelming. Western media analysts, in what some perceive as damage control, have floated the idea that Israel may have deliberately scaled down the operation. They argue that this was a symbolic warning of what might come in the future if tensions continue to escalate. Some media outlets attempted to underscore the supposed effectiveness of the strike by pointing to satellite images, but these lacked the clarity needed to definitively demonstrate significant damage to Iranian military infrastructure. When compared to the Iranian strike on October 1st, which left one of Israel's most fortified air bases defenseless and damaged multiple aircraft, Israel's recent efforts seem much less impactful. This contrast has not gone unnoticed, particularly among Iranian officials and analysts. Mohammad Morandi, a well-known Iranian academic who has often appeared on international news outlets, including Sky News and Al Jazeera, was particularly dismissive of Israel's efforts. Morandi, who has personal experience as a soldier during the Iran-Iraq war, mocked what he saw as Israel's attempts to downplay the apparent failure. He argued that the strike had been thwarted by Iran's robust air defense systems, which he claims tricked the Israeli military into targeting decoy installations rather than the real defense infrastructure. According to Morandi, this use of deception by Iranian engineers prevented what could have been one of the most devastating strikes on Iran in decades. Morandi went further suggesting that this was not only a tactical victory for Iran, but also an important test for its domestically produced missile defense systems and radar platforms. He argued that this successful defense would bolster Iran's position in the global arms market, which has been hindered by international sanctions. The fact that Iran was able to repel an attack from a military force as powerful as Israel's would, in Morandi's view, be a major selling point for countries looking to buy advanced defense systems. The notion of a potential Iranian retaliation also looms large. Morandi noted that the killing of Iranian service members during the defense of the country's airspace is a red line that Israel, which he referred to as the European occupiers of Palestine, had crossed. This rhetoric reflects a broader regional sentiment about the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, with Iran positioning itself as a staunch opponent of Israel's policies in the region. However, despite this strong language, Mirandi's comments could also be seen as part of a broader Iranian strategy to demonstrate resilience and preparedness in the face of external threats. Videos like this are often not promoted by YouTube, so we encourage you to help it reach more people by liking and sharing it with your friends and family. Subscribe to stay informed on the latest developments in Iran, Lebanon and Gaza. So Israel has conducted what it describes as precise strikes on military targets in Iran. What's your reaction to those strikes? I don't know if you introduce all of your academics as pro-UK or pro-US or pro-Israeli academic uh, when you pro uh, uh, introduce me as pro-Iranian, uh, but I'll leave that aside. Uh, I think it's quite clear that the Israeli regime is afraid, and that is why it carried out, or incapable, and that is why it carried out such an uh, insignificant strike. Uh, Iran will, of course, retaliate, and the Israeli regime will be punished, because the Iranians have pointed out before that every escalation carried out by the regime uh, and every act of aggression carried out by the regime will have to be responded to in order to create, create deterrence. And one sign of the regime's weakness is something that your reporter refused to say, and that is that the regime is not doing well on the border with Lebanon. And that is why the regime is now changing its objectives 
in Lebanon. They were supposed to take a significant chunk of southern Lebanon and make that a area where Hezbollah could not operate anymore. But uh, they're stuck at the border. They've given heavy casualties, especially during the last few days. And so it looks obvious that the regime is weak and vulnerable. You called this an, an insignificant strike by Israel. Uh, the targets, we're told, were military ones, um, not oil or nuclear facilities, for example. Given that, what level of response do you anticipate from Iran? The Iranian response will be significant. It will do more damage to the Israeli regime than the damage that the Israeli regime did to Iran, significantly more damage. And I think in the past, Iran showed that. The Israeli, the Israeli regime is an aggressive regime. It is a brutal and barbaric regime that carries out genocide. So it has to be contained. A regime that slaughters women and children day and night is not a regime that you can reason with. So you have to slap it down. And that's what Iran will do. And we saw last night how insignificant the strike was because the regime knows that Iran's response could be in thousands upon thousands of missiles raining down on the regime at a time when the regime is losing the battle against Hezbollah, Hezbollah, which is an ally of Iran, not a proxy, as your reporter likes to call it, is hammering the regime. And in Gaza, after over a year of after over a year of holocaust and genocide, the Israeli regime has failed to take that dot on the map. This is the same regime that decades ago took the whole Sinai, went all the way to the Suez Canal. And in 1982, it went all the way and captured Beirut. Now it's stuck on the border in the north. It can't take a dot on the south called the Gaza Strip. And it knows quite well what Iran can do to it. The IDF says that these strikes in are in response to months of continuous attacks from Iran and after the barrage of missiles that were sent by Iran to Israel on October the 1st, you say you anticipate a significant response now from Iran. So where does this end? Well, again, I think that very statement or those claims made by the regime show how dishonest it is, just like its history in Palestine, where they displaced the pop population and think that history began last year ago, when they massacred the population for decades, and they say history began on October the 7th. The Israelis actually carried out their first attack with the Americans with a cyber attack against Iran, Iran's nuclear program, the first cyber attack in the world. And then they assassinated scientists. I'm sure you remember that. One of those scientists was a colleague of mine at my university who was murdered in front of his wife. And then the Israeli regime, they murdered a number of Iranians who were fighting against ISIS and al-Qaeda in Syria because the Israeli regime was supporting ISIS and al-Qaeda. And of course, there were also, if you recall, uh, as other assassinations and drone attacks inside Iran. But when did this current exchange begin? It began when they bombed the Iranian embassy in Damascus, killing people, killing Iranians. Iran responded. Then they went and murdered Ismail Haniyeh. He was martyred as a, he was a guest of the president-elect for his inauguration. And he was martyred in a guest house, an official guest house. So Iran responded again. So these are, these are not Iranian escalations. And these are merely Iranian responses to Israeli regime aggression. After what happened at the embassy, Iran said enough is enough. It, it is no longer going to show strategic patience. For now on, Iran has to punish the regime so that it does not attack again. And so it's up to the Israeli regime. They're going to have to take their punishment and they're going to have to be hurt. But Iran is prepared to do this again and again because Iran easily outguns the regime. Iran can go on wave after wave, with, as I said, with thousands of, many thousands of uh, missile strikes and many thousands of drone strikes within days. So it's up to the regime. Do they want to devastate everything and destroy everything? We'll see. Give us an idea of what people in Tehran are waking up to this morning. What's being reported there about what's happened? What's being said about the extent of the damage, for example? 
Well, some people like myself were woken up by the media. Uh, RT and Al Jazeera called me, so I, I got up. I didn't hear anything. Uh, my family, most of them didn't know that anything happened. In my part of Tehran, uh, I couldn't hear those uh, explosions that uh, people were talking about. And then later on, others began to say they, that these were mostly anti-aircraft uh, or missiles or anti-aircraft guns. I don't know, but I don't know of any damage in the city. No one has uh, shown any damage. Uh, most people did not wake up. Uh, my relatives and friends, they woke up in, in the morning and heard the news as they were going to work. So uh, at the moment, there isn't anything for us to see. Uh, they, may, they may have hit some places in, uh, in bases in, in, two, three, in two, three parts of the country. So obviously, wouldn't, we wouldn't have access to those bases. But uh, it doesn't seem to be uh, it, it doesn't seem to be important at all. And we have to remember that Iran is a huge country. Palestine is very small. So when Iran fires 200 missiles, the, the, the whole regime shakes. Next time round, the Iranians could ramp that up to 1,000 missiles at one go. So uh, I think it would be smart for the regime to back down just as they're rethinking their catastrophic attack on Palestine, on Lebanon, on the Palestinian-Lebanese border. At this they point, should, uh, it's unclear what Israel's true intentions were with the strike. With Some analysts have suggested that the attack may have been less about causing immediate damage and more about testing Iran's defenses. In this view, Israel might have been gathering intelligence on Iran's capabilities, preparing for a more significant strike in the future when it is better positioned to take advantage of weaknesses. This would be in line with Israel's strategic patience, particularly regarding Hezbollah, where it waited until the right moment to launch a devastating attack on Lebanon. On the other hand, the threat of an Iranian counterstrike could be a powerful deterrent for Israel moving forward. Iran has a range of retaliatory options, targeting not only military assets, but also Israel's nuclear, oil, and civilian infrastructure. Any escalation could be costly for both sides, and Israel might be cautious about engaging in a full-scale confrontation, especially given the unpredictable consequences such a conflict could have in the region. The balance of power between Iran and Israel has always been a delicate one influenced by a combination of military capability, regional alliances, and broader geopolitical dynamics. Israel, often touted as having the most powerful military in the Middle East, faces an Iran that has, over the years, developed significant self-reliance in its military technology due to sanctions and diplomatic isolation. Iran's missile and drone capabilities, combined with its alliances with regional actors like Hezbollah, present a real threat to Israeli security. Meanwhile, Israel's intelligence network, precision strikes, and cutting-edge technology continue to give it a substantial advantage. In this context, the recent strike, regardless of its immediate effectiveness, serves as a reminder of the ongoing shadow war between the two countries. While neither side is eager for full-scale war, both are continually probing each other's defenses, preparing for the possibility of future conflict. As long as this uneasy standoff persists, the risk of miscalculation remains high, and the potential for escalation is ever-present. Whether this recent strike was a misstep for Israel or part of a larger strategy, one thing is certain— the tension between Israel and Iran shows no signs of abating any time soon, as far as the killings in Gaza continues.